you're gonna make crab and dough. Step one, crabs. What's step two? We have to catch them. Oh! Our Caribbean culinary adventure continues. Last time, I chowed down on fiery Haitian food on the Bahamas' most bustling tourist island, New Providence. Oh, that's really spicy. For you, it's fine. Mm -hmm. I didn't see you eat that much, though. Because it's spicy. <laughs> Smart. Today, I'm escaping the tourist traps and overpriced drinks and heading into the bush. Right now, we're on one of the tiniest airplanes I've ever been on. It feels more like a flying bus. It's a 15-minute flight. We're going to be fine. This is Andros, the most sparsely populated island out of 700 islands in the Bahamas. The tranquil, remote island where you explore yourself. Every day you find something new that you want to do. Do you know what I want to do today? You want to cook, right? Sunny, <laughs> or you want to do a challenge, right? I Close. saw the challenges. I want to eat. Tourists here are few and far between. This right here is uh, about 10 tongues from 10 sheep. In fact, you'd be hard pressed to even find a restaurant. And so what would you say is the identity of Andros? What makes Andros Andros? Crabs. 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 Crab. <laughs> crab. 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 If you want food in Andros, you've got to get it yourself. No way. There's a crab backing up a tree. How you doing? I'm fine. Where are we right now? We are in the Church of God Mission House. For 20 years, Chantel was a general manager of a Burger King in New Providence. Now she's chosen the tranquil life, cooking for church parishioners inside this mission house. Today, you're making sauce. Am I saying it right? Yes, sauce. Sauce. It's a traditional Bahamian stew. The flavor of sauce is built on multiple veggies and herbs, including potatoes, onions, lime, and bay leaves. The protein is up to you. This right here is uh, about 10 tongues from 10 sheep. Ba, 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 ba. These have been boiled already. And then what's the next step? You have to peel the tongue because it has a layer. Oh, can I see that? Yeah. The inside is super smooth. It looks like a little foot. <laughs> <laughs> you could break it in half, and unlike a duck tongue, there's no bone inside. It's super soft, tender. It has that kind of muttony sheep smell to it, which I like. Can I give it back? Sorry, I tore you the tongue. That's okay. Then. You'd wash your hands right there. Turn it around. All right. <laughs> Once the thick outer skin is removed, the tongues are diced into bite-sized cubes. Here's what I can't figure out. We're in the Bahamas. There's not a lot of cattle herding, growing, breeding happening here. So all these tongues have been imported into the Bahamas. Giant shipping containers full of sheep tongues are coming here. Why are you whispering so much? Oh, you want me to talk? I just whispered because... But I like that. Right. You want to whisper too, <laughs> but you're like... Yes. Next, unite the ingredients in a big pot of clear broth. Enhance the flavor with butter chunks, salt, and pepper. Let it simmer until the tongue meat is tender. Pair it with grits to turn it into a hearty breakfast, which doubles as an efficient hangover remedy. First of all, thank you. This looks incredible. I've eaten the body of Christ, but not soup or stew. Would you call this a stew? <laughs> so tell me how we do this. I would normally put some of the sheep dung in first and then add a little bit of the grits as I eat it. Joining our table, Emerson, a local chef from the island of Andros. I'm gonna try a little bit of this broth. Mmm, oh yeah, salty, peppery, and like a nice layer of fat from whatever meat's been boiling in there. I'm just dying to get a taste of this tongue. Warm, moist, it's delicious, and just super tender. There's so much tongue here, and I like it. There's no skimping on the tongue. Some oh, people wow. like it very, very peppery. Yeah, I've learned when people say pepper here, what they really mean <laughs> is habanero chili peppers that have been blended down that will just absolutely scorch your throat. What do you think? <laughs> Too much? It's a lot. Oh, I can, <laughs> I can smell it from here. We have to start praying soon. This is a place to do it. I taste it up into my nose. They normally would say, you haven't tried it unless you put the pep in it. They like to cry, I could tell. We like, let me see. Hold on, spicy? <laughs> a little spicy? Yeah, the heat. Yeah, in the room, right? No, yeah. not the chilies. I want to ask both of you about Andros. I spent a few days already on New Providence, and I've gotten a lot of the tourist experience, and I get here, it's completely different. Now for you, you lived on New Providence for 20 years. Mm -hmm. 
Now you've come back here. What is the difference between these two islands? What I love the most is peace. But it's not fast. It's just it's laid back. Yes. Chef Emerson left Andros at a young age. After spending time in Nassau, cooking inside resorts, he returned back to this island, where he runs a fishing village with his family. And so what would you say is the identity of Andros? What makes Andros Andros? Crab. Crabs. 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 <laughs> Andros is known to have the largest population of land crabs in the Bahamas. We have two types. We call white crabs, we say black crabs. The black crabs are the dark, they're lower, and then the white crabs are the bigger version. When they're in season, a good crab hunter could earn up to $10,000 while only losing a finger or two. They bite very hard. Have you been bit before? Oh, holla, scream. Like a baby. Oh my god, I feel like you're having a moment right now. When the black ones bite you, they don't let go. Most of the time, you have to beat it off. Oh, you have to beat it off? I don't even know. <laughs> I have no idea how to beat off a crab. They run in a lot in the daytime, but in the night, you have a better chance of sneaking up on them to get close enough where it isn't as much back and forth running. Crab hunters here get busy from late May to early November, when thousands upon thousands of land crabs litter the streets in search of spawning grounds. That means it might be tough, but it's not too late to catch some crabs of my own. Emerson, Junior, Junior, Emerson. This masked man is Junior. Whether he knows it or not, he's my crab mentor. Junior, are you on Bahamas Most Wanted? Well, it's for protection. Mosquitoes oh. and protection. Armed with only gloves and a flashlight, this season, Junior has bagged over 150 dozen crabs. I can't work out the math on that, but it's a lot. I don't have any protective clothing. Okay, here's what I can do. I can, I'm gonna put my pants in my socks. That way, crab can't go up my pants. Are you guys gonna do this? No, no I don't need to. Yeah, I'm pretty good. The sun is set, we have our gear. Confident? I'm confident. In me? Uh, not really, but I'm confident in me. <laughs> There's nothing left to do but to do it. And are they gonna be in a hole or could they just be laying out? Well, I hope they're just lying out. If I see a crab, I'm gonna yell crab. Okay, I'll yell crab as well. I don't wanna go where they're going but I probably should. I think I hear one over here. No, no, that's just you walking. Uh, Any luck? No, uh-uh. Creating a cool flare. <laughs> crab. 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 Oh, dude, good eye. There's a white crab here, but it is at the base of this tree. What do you suggest? It's under the tree. Well, I'm gonna run him out. Okay. Out to the clear and you catch him over there. So I'll go over there? Yes. Okay, I'll go over here. He's gonna he's gonna scare me. Oh, it's a big one. No. Yeah. Oh. oh my god, the pinchers. Okay. Lay down, little boy. They can really poke you with their back claws. Got to pick them up. From side to side. Oh, side to side. Yes. So you think he can't, he can't get me then? Oh, <laughs> what's that like, buddy? It's big, it's bright, it's beautiful. This is the white one? Yes, it is. Beauty, big body. This pincher right here, this could cut off your thumb. Easy. You'll see a lot of people on this island, nine fingers. There's a reason for it. It's also not true. How do I do? You did well for the first time, huh? Do you think it was pretty unfounded, Emerson's lack of confidence in me? I almost lose confidence in you too because you almost had nine fingers. <laughs> <laughs> All right, in you go. Plop. There you Let's go. Let's get some more crabs. Crab. Crab. Oh, come on. Were you sleeping, buddy? This is too easy. Oh, oh he's pissed. I woke him up from a good dream. Get him, sonny, get him. <laughs> oh, yeah. Open the bag. Hold on, let me check my BPMs. This is wild. 135. Oh, it's easy with those gloves, huh? Sunny, sunny. Huh? You got one in the tree. Holy cow. There's a crab backing up a tree. What the heck? I've been looking on the ground this whole time. What do you recommend? Do I throw a rock at it? No. Okay. Oh, no, he's got a good grip. Yeah, I'm going to get a stick. I'm going to knock it down. You want me to jump and catch it? Oh, jump? You think jump? Oh, are you okay? Emerson, have you ever seen that before? Crabs no. in trees? No, I've never seen that before. Have you seen that? No. That is wild. Unless he did that for you, Sonny. Yeah, he did it for me. I think so. For the show. 
Watch the bro, Sonny, watch the bro. Yeah, let's see it. Oh, real quick, by the leg. Gentlemen, let's see what we got. Oh, it's heavy. This has got to be, uh, what, 10 pounds? Maybe a little more. Yeah, maybe a little more. Gentlemen, thank you. Honorary crop catcher now. Hey. I got a surprise for you. What's that? You said when you go cropping, sometimes you come up with nine fingers. Uh-huh. Well, I happen to have nine. Oh, shit. Is that from a crab? No, no. <laughs> This won't be the last time I need to watch my fingers. This is so much yeah. easier when I could just step on them. Oh my God, <laughs> that one up. almost got me. With crabs in hand, we'll be feasting well tonight. But first, I have some other unique foods on this island that I absolutely must see. Hichely. Good morning. Good morning, put her there. What's up? Just hanging out in your kitchen. Like many on this island, Kishley spent a few years studying and working on New Providence. Now she's on Tranquil Andros, taking care of her parents and working as a private chef or catering events. Yesterday I went crabbing. I caught several crabs, no gloves. Several crabs right in Andros today? Yesterday. Okay. How come everyone is so doubtful about me catching crabs? <laughs> That don't sound realistic. You know what I want to do today? You want to cook, right? Sunny, <laughs> or you want to do a challenge, right? Close. I, I want to eat. Well, it's a good time. I'm going to do stew fish for mom and dad, and you can join us. For most Bahamians, a perfect stew fish is made from grouper or snapper and served with Johnny Cakes. Chef's pick today, hog snapper. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and remove the wings to further enhance our dish. And then after this, we're going to cut it up. Does this soup have a boneless option? It doesn't. Okay. Have you ever gotten a bone in your throat? We have, but that's the trick of the Johnny Cake. It helps to push it further back. <laughs> <laughs> Next, Kishley portions the fish and marinates it with salt, pepper, and goat pepper, or habanero. It's eaten in the morning. Yes, that's what we normally have, either stew fish or boiled fish. Normally? Yes. I see four boxes of cereal in your refrigerator. Because we have kids. That's the difference. We oh, have okay. kids in here, too. All right, so <laughs> While the fish absorbs those flavors, she prepares a roux. She browns flour in a pan with oil. And adds bay leaves, onion, and water. It's stirred well to form a thick soup base. Now, lightly fry the fish to give it a nice brown coat. Drop the fish in the soup and let it simmer until the fish is tender and cooked through. And this is the completed version of our stew fish. I'm dying to try this. Everything looks fantastic. Please. Oh, the Johnny Cakes. So what makes a Johnny Cake a Johnny Cake? Normal bread has leaven. This has just bacon powder. No bacon sodas and no eggs or anything. It's warm, the butter just melts into it, crunchy on the outside. Oh, it's so good. This is something I guess you can take with you. You'll give me the recipe? Definitely. Or I should bring you to America. Please, I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> I want to soak up some of this broth. Mm -hmm. Oh, Tight. that's so good. It reminds me of when people in the South, in the USA, they have biscuits and gravy. It has a little bit of that quality to it, where it's a little peppery, it's thick, it's savory, but it's just on another level, because there's some spice to it, you've added some citrus, and then right here in the middle, a big old fish filet. Be mindful of the bones. Yeah, you <laughs> gotta eat with caution. Mm -hmm. Okay, once you fry it down, it helps to seal the flavors into it. Oh, these flavors are sealed. They're not going anywhere. <laughs> the fish is flaky, sticky, and I'm not used to having fish with this type of a flavor, with a kind of a thick stew. Is it something you think you'd try at home? Yeah, if it was available, absolutely. But that leads me to my next question. This island is so mysterious to me because if you go to New Providence, there's restaurants everywhere. Right. But I come out here, I have to come to your kitchen to experience this. How come there are so few restaurants on this island? Almost no restaurants. The Bahamas Islands are all marketed differently. They market Andros Island for bone fishing. In between the summer months, you see more bone fishing persons come in. That's where I come in. I do private caterings for homeowners coming in back and forth. Do you enjoy doing that? I do. I can't get to travel to all of the states in Florida, so it's good to meet somebody else. The states travel to you? Definitely. Mm -hmm. Where are you from? Minnesota. That's why you say you're taking me, huh? <laughs> <laughs> to thank Kishley for the breakfast. I've invited her to join our crab feast later in the day. In the meantime, I'm headed to one of the only restaurants you'll find on this island, the Lucky Luska. Oh, your kitchen is gorgeous. Thank you. You can double as a, a background for a weatherman. Yes, mm. hopefully. <laughs> in addition to running Lucky Luska, Charlene also cooks for members of a nearby military base. One of her more notable dishes is a bit of a Caribbean novelty, her stuffed white crown pigeon. 
the pigeon. It's white? The pigeon is black, but only the top of the crown of the head is white. How do you usually get your hands on the pigeons? You go hunting them. Hunting season, September 29th to October, I think 30th. Otherwise, we cannot shoot them. Oh, it's too late for that now. Yeah. This dainty bird, once abundant in this area, has declined in numbers as of late. Now, while they're in season, hunters are limited to 50 birds per day, which uh, still seems like a lot to me. You're serving pigeon, but you're actually stuffing it with a lobster. Conque lobster with bacon seasoning. Charlene starts her dish by dicing ingredients for the stuffing. The conque lobster gives the stove top stuffing a zest. Is that cheating? You're using... I can put that away and I can use my bread chrome. See, I, I'm, I'm backed up. Chrome. You don't need this. I don't need that. Yeah, you're not reliant no, on it. No, I'm not reliant You don't on have that to use stone I top. I don't have to use that at all. But you can if you want to. <laughs> Saute the meat with onion, celery, chili pepper, and a touch of goat pepper. Fry the pigeons until they cook through. Now, the stuffing. Moving with meticulous precision, she fills the delicate birds then stuffs them into the oven for 30 minutes. Right here, two pigeons. Maybe they were siblings. I want to jump into this right here. Bacon, stuffing, seafood. Mm. Mm. Only a hint of stovetop stuffing. To be honest, I really love stovetop stuffing. So you taste the bacon, and then you just taste little bits of seafood, some crunchy conch, some chewy lobster. Mm. That's awesome. This is a leg. Rip that off. That's a thigh right here. Look at this. Look how tiny this is. Oh, there we go. That's a bite of meat. Super dark meat. Mm -hmm. All right. So good. But there's just not very much of it. Right here. This is the breast. This is all just meat. It's a dark skin, blackish gray almost. And then the meat, a slightly bloody gray color. It's an interesting color. Delicious. Juicy, a little oily, fatty, definitely dark meat. So usually, if you're eating chicken, the breast meat is going to be more dry white meat. Here, it's super juicy, super fatty, which I like. Lobster, conch, inside a pigeon, super unique, but not the last food we have for today. The crabs we caught yesterday are waiting for me at Lori's house, and this is Lori. She is Chef Emerson's aunt. Lori, we're here. Thank you for having me. Can you believe I helped catch some of these? Oh, wow. You did? Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> Why? Why is everybody yeah, laughing at yeah, that idea? You know. Usually, freshly caught crabs don't hit the pot right away. Many locals have one of these in their backyard, a crab pen, where crabs are fed fresh fruit, allowing them to purge whatever nasty stuff they'd been eating on the forest floor. The result is supposed to be sweeter, less bitter meat. When the crabs are ready, they need to be clipped. Now, you know, they're very aggressive sometimes. Yeah. They, they don't like to be caught. I think that one's sleeping. Oh, okay. This one is sleeping, and this is a big one. I'm gonna try to get the clippers, like that, oh. and then I'm gonna ring it, like that. Yeah. And it's easy to just, once you do it right. You just rip its arms off? Yes, I did. Cool. <laughs> and then right in the joint, you clip, and huh. it just drops right off. It's joint, drops right off. It's, it's, it's an easy fix. Yeah. Sorry, if, I just... If you know what you're doing. You want to hold it? Yeah. It's like the knight from Monty Python. It has no arms and no legs. Yes. It's still alive. Yes, it's still alive. But in our culture, we clip them first before preparing them. I feel it moving its little nubs. Uh -huh. It's like I'm trying yes. to walk, but nothing's happening. Yes, everything is going. All right, I'm going to put that one. Oh, my God. <laughs> you almost that one up. almost got me. Yes. OK, you yes. know what? I oh. felt bad for like two seconds. Why don't you try to get one that's asleep? No, because that one tried to attack me. Oh. It's personal. OK, the hardest part is taking off the claws. Yes. Yeah. Sorry, I'm gonna bruise our food. Oh, this is so much yeah. easier when I could just step on them. I can't step on them right now. You try to pull it out. Pull it by the big claw? Yeah, quickly. Just pull it quickly. Yeah. Good. There you go. Yeah, get up, get up, get up. Oh, what are you gonna do with your little ass claw? Okay. Yeah, Sunny. Um, I just, I just twist it. Oh! Try to get it by both claws and then um, twist it. I feel bad for it. <clears throat> Oh, you plugged it. Gone. Give it a little bit of a twist. Good. Yeah, there we go. <sighs> That's stressful. I mean, the claw. Oh. Like, huh? What was I so freaked out about? Look at yeah. this. Today, Lori is making another Bahamian classic, crab and dough. The amputated crabs are cleaned and placed in a pot. 
seasoned with salt and pepper, onion, and goat pepper. Add a cup of water and let it steam. In the meantime, prepare a dough with flour, baking powder, salt, and water. And place that over the crab. Let the pot boil, steaming the bread and the crabs for 25 minutes. Now it's time to eat. You might as well take this big bite of here. Oh, because it's easy. To I handle. couldn't. Okay, yes. I'll take it. and some dough. It's a little different from the Johnny cake. <laughs> Sorry, I started. I mean, <laughs> go ahead. Don't wait for me. But you have to wait for the crab fat inside. So all the crab together. Turn it over so it doesn't do. Oh, so it's like the head becomes a bowl. And just pull it apart. Oh, 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 oh. it's like dark and brown in there. Yeah. yeah, I sopped up a ton of this fat. It's wet. It's brown. Yeah, that's a lot of flavor. It's super fatty. It's a little sweet, but it's also a little bitter too. And the bread is outstanding. It's soft and doughy like my six pack abs. Then the other experience comes from the opposite side of the crab. This piece is called the band. You pull this band completely off. Oh, you're so good at crab anatomy. It's Andros, it's our thing. <laughs> now see this, so we're gonna break it in half. We're gonna take these off individually. You just bite into it. It's a challenge, so oh, just eh? bite it in. Awesome. Whoa, that's a huge chunk. And that chunk of meat is better than the fat. No bitterness. Yeah, just super sweet. Yeah. Awesome. Delicious. And you know, in the US, few people appreciate the crab's body. You go to Red Lobster, you get crab legs, and that's it. But here, you can see there's a bunch of meat, there's fat, there's a lot in there that is easily wasted. I'll see this. Take the claw. You try to separate this from that. See? Wow. Yes. I pull it out, pull it out, slowly. Right, he's got it. Oh. Ow! Whoa. Yes! <laughs> Enjoy that. Yes, you can now be labeled as Androsian because you've officially eaten a crab. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's the best bite so far. Super meaty, sweet, delicious. So you've experienced crab and dough. To me, when I first came to this island, I was a little bit skeptical about Andros. We were trying to contact people. It was very hard to contact people to know what was going on here. It just seemed like this place where you just have to go here to figure things out. And then even once we got here, it's like interesting. It's a, a different pace of life. It's very different from the capital city. And I can see why people appreciate that. But what I appreciate even more than any of that is that this place is so uh, rich and abundant with food. I mean, the fact that we're eating a delicious crab meal and you can just walk out in the forest and crab this. From the bush to the plate. Yeah, so this place is just so rich it's with rich. resources and natural beauty and wonderful people too. Thank you. To Andras. This is just water. <laughs> <laughs> Best Ever Food Review Show is a small team of independent creators, and everything we do here works because of you guys. Click the link in our description to join our Patreon and receive exclusive benefits. A piece. What's it from? Cutting wood. Well, that sounds a lot more dangerous. Yeah. Can we lie and say I was? From a crab? I'm gonna paint a real good backstory for you. Like you're trying to get revenge, you decimate the population because one of them got your finger. One giant claw. One claw that is undercompensated. Oh, um, one, yeah, one small one. I can't think of a good show. All right, I don't want to leave until I spot one. Then, unless I don't, then we'll edit that part out. Charlene, put her there. Can I, oh, I, I washed my hand. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> you looked a little freaked out. Show me how we begin. Well, um, you all started by catching the crabs, right? You don't have to go like all the way to the <laughs> okay, beginning, okay. but mainly, how do you eat it? Who the heck is Luska? Luska is a mammal that we were told back in the day that lived in the blue hole. And one day, we had some of our relatives went out in one of the blue holes, and they never returned. They never found them. They found their boats. They went into the hole. They dove for like almost two, three days. They found nothing of them. So. No more, he and his wife. So where's the lucky part come in? Guys, that is the end of the video. I want to thank all the chefs and cool, awesome, fun local people who joined me or let me hang out with them and annoy them and eat food with them. It was an incredible experience for me. And man, this island is awesome. That is it for this one, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I'm going to see you next time. A peace. Now I will walk into the black void. Oh, this is a street. Oh, those are headlights. I hope I'm going to be okay. Okay.